Hi and welcome to week four. I hope that week three again helped you to integrate more of the reasons why we're looking at businesses and corporations and the fact that they need to, as responsible companies, um, sustainably use the resources and help the people where they're working. In return, all of those make benefits within the companies and they're actually able to make more money while conserving resources and sponsoring communities. So I'm hoping that you see that, that this can be a really beneficial cycle. This week we're going to talk about um, the melting of glaciers, ice sheets, and um, sea ice. So we're going to look at the, whether they're waxing or waning. We're going to look at the impact that they'll have on sea level and on um, releasing water during snow melt for uh, growing crops in the spring. Um, those are the environmental issues that we're going to look at. We're also going to talk about something that's called land grab. And a land grab is where another country, organization, or company will have used their resources in their uh, country, like um, Saudi Arabia has most of its fossil water gone and so it is dependent on the world for 95% of its wheat. Well, these companies and these countries and governments can go into other countries, let's say Burkina Faso, and they can lease or buy the land so that they can grow the crops, whether it's for profit or to feed their own people. Um, and a lot of times, as you saw in Burkina Faso last week, these are not uh, these are not legal. They're not approved by the um, the people who are actually living on this land. Uh, as far as our embedded sustainability textbook, there is no framework um, out there to on how to embed sustainability into a corporation. There are corporations like. Walmart and Coca-Cola and GE who are working to have it from the foundation in all of their business activities uh, but they're really setting the standard right now. They're, they're learning what the best practices are, uh, how can we do this and, and they're actually getting together and they're sharing it. Other companies like BP back in the 90s, BP, British Petroleum, said it was going green and it didn't have a plan for it. So five years later, after it had said that it was going to go green, it was going to make everything environmentally safe, um, that failed because it was not part of the fabric of the company. And the president and CEO got fired and they, they gave up on it. So this week we're looking at the three types of of strategies that businesses can have that will help embed sustainability inside of them and will lead them to better products, better processes, but also new types of, of technologies, new ideas for products that are radically changed from a product that we would have seen before. Uh, an example is Lush. It's a bar shampoo and it's by a luxury uh, beauty company in the UK and what they came up with was an entirely new product. They have a bar of luxury shampoo and it's in a bar and they didn't have to pay for the packaging of it. It's compact so they can ship more and it has a, as good a quality as, as any shampoo and because it's a luxury item they've taken a, a segment of the market for people who are willing to pay for a high-end product and they're making a profit on it. So they're being environmentally sustainable and they have come up with uh, an entirely new product that no one else has. So this is what we're talking about this week and I hope that you can learn a lot and if you have any questions please email me and I'll get back to you. Thanks for listening. Bye.